All right, so now we're going to put together the caster frame uh, in, in the assembly. And what we'll do is, before you do that, make sure you have all of the parts open. Everything is set to default. OK. We're going to start with the frame as the first part in the assembly. So I'm going to create a new assembly starting with this part. Now remember, if you're using a template, make sure you check your, your units for that template. I have to do this afterwards. Let's let's cancel this and make sure we can take a look at inch pound second. And what we'll do here is we'll insert component. We'll start with the uh, frame. Now the thing is, I can't see my origin, so I'm going to turn that on, right? And make it coincident with the origin. All right. Now you can see a couple things here. If I expand the design tree, right? Here's the fixed part frame instance one. That's really important. Also, if you right click over the part, you'll see here component properties, right? It's set to default. Now, as we bring in the other parts, I'm going to go ahead and do insert component. We're going to bring in the wheel. It's just going to set it in here. Now, to mate it, here's what we'll need to do, OK? First, I need it to be concentric with the holes. But then, I also need to think about how to space it within the frame, right? So it's going to be at least two mates. A shortcut to mate is to hold down the Alt key, select the feature that you want to mate, left click, drag it over the feature that you want to mate it with, right? And you can see. SOLIDWORKS will automatically try to tell you what type of mate to use. It's using concentric. Let go of the left mouse button, right, and then let go of Alt. Then you should see the uh, pop-up palette to confirm, right? We want concentric. Now you can see that it's going to be spinning around here, but it's going to be moving through the frame, right? You can see there's a gap, so I, it, I can't necessarily just put it against face-to-face, -face, right? How would I be able to align it perfectly in the center? So now what you can do is, if you look at the design tree here, is you can start to reference the individual part geometry, in this case, planes, right? So you can see I'm looking at the frame. Here's the right plane in the frame. I'll control click that one. And if you look at the wheel here, we can use the front plane, so I'll control click that one, and now you can see with the pet palette here, I can use the mate, or you can go to the top there in your command manager and find the mate as well. We're going to use mate, and you'll be able to see here, if we use coincident, by definition, the way the way we design this, right, is it's, it's going to be centered perfectly between the two sides. And I can click OK. And now you can see the exit mates. You can see now it's fully defined. You can see it's still rotating, right? But it's not moving left or right. It's locked into position. OK? Now we'll go ahead and bring in the last component here, the pin. Now, similarly, I'm going to use the Alt key. Click on the large diameter here. We're going to line it up with the hole and actually we should think about this okay you can see using the pet palette here I can flip it around all right when I click OK here you'll notice in the design tree it's been added as a new mate right but if you take a closer look you can see that it was actually made it with the frame and that's actually what I want because if it made it with the wheel Right? What are we changing? We're changing not only the uh, the wheel diameter, but we're actually changing the height, the location of the hole. Right? So it's better to associate it with the changing feature, which is in the frame. So I can verify that mate relation right there. Okay. Now the other thing is that I got to pull this out and make sure I can make it. Or, or made it coincident with the face here. So I'll pre-select that. 
and do control click on this face and then again use the pop-up palette for the mates and you can see it interpret that as coincidence so we'll go ahead and use that now we've got our basic assembly created all using the default configurations.